Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to Look Back here on the Dice Tower, where we take a look at reviews that I did a year, five years, and ten years ago. And I tell you what I think about them today, if I think about them at all. Let's jump back this week to one year ago. I reviewed the new version of Hero Quest. I gave it a six, because it's okay. But it also infuriates me still, that they didn't make it that much different. They had so much leeway to change things, to make the system a little smoother. Yes, it's a classic blah, 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 nostalgia, blah, blah, blah. That's all great. But they changed almost nothing. And I felt like they could have streamlined it a little bit. Look at Restoration Games. Six is all they get. 6.5 for Dream Crush. It's a game that's pretty funny, actually, about who would be your Dream Crush. Got to play it with my variant, though, where you don't get to see the picture of the person because that would affect you too much about it. It's okay for a lark. It's not much of a game. Troll Fest, I gave a 7-2. I believe I'm one of the highest ratings for this game, but I find this making a rock band out of trolls and vampires and elves and things like that to be a fun little romp. Watch. This one's also a 7, so this one's not a very good looking game, but it's about making a watch kind of in a communist factory where you're also tattling on other people or trying to catch them doing things that are wrong. A really interesting action selection mechanism. Definitely worth checking out. It could look a little nicer, but mechanically it sounds 7 out of 10. Creature Comforts. This one from Kids at Tables Board Games. I like it. It's nice. It's pleasant. Beautiful pieces. This is the opposite of Watch. I think Watch is a better game, but Creature Comforts is still a good game, but really, really looks cool. And then Voices in My Head. Man, I like this game. Voices in My Head. This game about someone's on trial, and you, one person's the voice of conscience, and the other person is the voice of... Um, try to get away with it, a pride and arrogance, and you're all trying to make things happen with a push mechanism that's kind of like the little coin thing at Chuck E. Cheese. It's <laughs> all this mixed into one game with some, a dose of humor, I find to be fun. Eight out of ten. Five years ago, I reviewed Escape the Dark Castle, and I still get angry um, comments on my review to this day. I gave it a two out of ten because I hate it, and I still hate it. Two reasons I hate it. I hate the artwork. I know some people are like, oh, we love this. It's stylized. Great. Art's objective. I get it. I despise it. Two, the game, you flip a card over, roll, die, and see what happens. And there's not like a cohesive story. It's random. I don't, I don't get it. I'm not the target audience for this one, clearly. Harry Hopper. This is a Cosmos team game where you put a bunch of sticks out there and you're just trying to knock them over like these grasshoppers that you jump in. Yeah, it's fun for like a th family thing. Six out of ten for kids. Ursa Minor, this one's about bears and stars and bears. It's an okay game, 6 out of 10. And Awkward Guests, man, I dropped the rating a bit, but still an amazing game. This one also, terrible artwork. Artwork that, well, at least, again, subjectively, I don't like it at all. But the game. Goodbye, Clue. Never play Clue again. Play Awkward Guests. What a cool game of deduction. Very highly recommend it. Ten years ago, just one game, The Bottle Imp. This one, a 7.5, which is not as high as, I suppose, a 9 for Awkward Guests, but 7.5 for The Bottle Imp. Very good trick-taking game for three players. Well, I mean, I guess you can play with other players, but it's a great three-player game. So you have these different cards, that are yellow, green, and uh, yellow, red, and blue, but there's only one number of each card. So you're sitting here trying to figure it out. Highest number wins a trick, but, but, if you can play a number that's lower than a certain number, which is the price of the bottle, you can win the trick. But then the price drops. And if you end up with the bottle at the end of a round, you lose points. Love it. And it's thematic. It's based on Robert Louis Stevenson's story. It's the most thematic trick-taking game out there. Really cool thing. So there you go, folks. Those are the reviews that I did one, five, and ten years ago. I'm Tom Vassell, and this has been Look Back on the Dice Tower. <laughs>